This video is part of a series of videos I'm doing where I'm trying to resolve this issue with my Ecotec 3.8 litre V6, which is in my Toyota Land Cruiser Bundera. The root cause is the valve stem seals. Now I'm going to do something I've never done before in all of my mechanicing history, and we're gonna show you a very cool trick that can save you a lot of money. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so that we can all go wheel and well and have a fantastic time. And if you love this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. So the issue I have is my engine burns a little bit of oil on the overrun or after a long idle period. And the way I know that is when I'm on the overrun and come back on the power, there's a big plume of blue smoke or when I'm sitting at the traffic lights and when I take off, there's a big plume of blue smoke. And effectively what I believe happens is that some engine oil is getting sucked down past the valve stem seals underneath the rocker covers. And, it, and because at idle and on the overrun, the engine creates the highest amount of vacuum and that vacuum is sucking engine oil into my combustion chambers and burning. And why does that cause me a misfire? Well, what happens is when that smoke goes through the engine, it comes out the exhaust pipe and it fouls up the oxygen sensors. And then when the o oxygen sensor or O2 sensor is fouled up, it doesn't tell the computer the correct information. So the computer starts to feed in too much fuel. And I've been seeing that happen in this motor when it does that, the spark plugs start to foul up and get sooty and then they misfire under load because that's when a spark plug has to do its work harder. So it's a very roundabout way of finding the original cause. Something my grandfather said to me when I was a young mechanic was always look at the simple things first. So I started out by looking at the spark plugs. They were simple, but I always knew I had this oil burning issue. So let's get into it. I'm going to take the rocket covers off, I'm going to take the rocket gear off, and we're going to get down to the nuts and bolts of how do you change your valve stem seals without pulling the cylinder heads off. It's kind of cool. I've never done it. I hope I get it right. Let's see how we go. So this is the rocket gear. These are what open and close the valves. The valves are just down under here, and the valve stem seals will be under these springs. So the next thing we're going to do is take these off and then uh, we'll get into it. Right, it's been a couple of hours. I know it hasn't for you, but for me it has because I needed to do a couple before I actually came back to the camera, which I'm doing now. So I've had to make myself up a special little tool like this. Um, just cut out a cutout and work something out that's going to work for my vehicle. Your vehicle may well be different. Other than that, I'm not really using any specialist tools or anything like that. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring the camera in close and we're going to go through it. I'm going to do one right there in front of you on screen and we'll talk it through as we go and you'll watch me make mistakes and it'll all be pretty cool. So I'll reset the camera and we'll rip into it. Okay guys, so the first thing I did when I got the ro rocket gear off was I chucked the rag in there because I don't want bits going down into the sump. That would be a problem. Then we've got to put the engine, so one of the piston we're working on is at top dead centre. And so the easiest way to do that, shove a screwdriver down the plug hole, just a small one like this, and then I put a spanner up here on the alternator and just turned the motor over. Because it's in, in um, no plugs and no valve gear, it turns real easy. Um, once I've got it on TD or top dead center for that cylinder, I then I put it in fifth gear and away we went. Now, we've got to, next thing we're gonna do is put this device in to put compressed air in the cylinder. So I've made, adapted my compression tester that I used earlier to um, have this valve on it and then an airline fitting. Okay, and so we screw that down in here into the plug hole. So we're doing, we're achieving two things here. Two means, like, oh, well I should say I suppose, the worst thing that could happen would be one of the valves dropped inside the engine because you've got to pull your heads off. And I don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. That's why I'm doing it this way. So by having the piston at top dead center, the piston itself is one reason the valve can't drop in. And 
compressed air in there is the second reason it can't drop in. So now that's hooked up, I can hook my air line up. All right, and then I'm just going to turn a little bit of compressed air on, and all going well, the motor won't won't rotate because it's in gear, being manual. Uh, there's a little bit of an air leak there, but hey, that's fun, isn't it? Not worried about it. A little bit of leak is all good. Okay, so so that's there. Now we've got those two in place. So the next thing we're going to do is get my special tool. Now. If you want to buy this tool, the part number is 76DMM for Mad Matt 72. Uh, you won't find it on eBay or on the internet or anywhere actually because I made it for this job and it's mine. It's not for sale. Having you on. All right, so that's the tool that goes on there. Then I need to get over here. Sorry, camera was in the way. It's kind of challenging filming this one for you guys. All right, so once the tool's in place, you can see how it's going to push down on this outer part here of the, of the, the, the valve. Now, I'll tighten it up. You watch. Watch this. See? See it go down? Now, I need to grab my mag. I have a magnet, and I just, all going well, suck the, these half bits. These are called collets. Don't ask me to spell it. I, I use the magnet because I just don't want to drop them. Believe it or not, I've already dropped two doing some of the other ones when I was practicing. Okay, here we go. Come on, girl. All right, so there they are. I'm leaving them stuck to me magnet. Oh, put that back up here on the battery. Okay, so now we'll bring the, take the spring off. So we just back this off. Bring that out. That comes up and out. Put this. New Buick special tool away. Okay, and that's my springs and my seat. And that's the stem seal there. See that, that piece there? That's a valve stem just there. Now, what I do to get the seal off is just pick it up with a screwdriver. Just go. There she goes. You might be able to get it off with a pair of pliers or that, but I'm just being stupidly careful because I just hate the idea of dropping a valve. Okay, so there you go. That's the valve, old valve stem seal that uh, should be leaking, all going well. Okay, so I'll grab the new valve stem seals here. Look at this. You'll, generally, you have two different types. Um, inlet, which is this black rubber, and exhaust, which is this brown rubber. And the brown is for the exhaust because they tend to run hotter and so the rubber needs to be more tolerable to heat. Now, before I chuck the seal on, chuck a bit of oil up around there, just to give it that lubrication when she first fires up. Okay, and put that down. Now, I'll grab this. I've got this socket, which is perfectly sized. And I'm just very, holding it very square, tap that down. Okay, I can actually hear a difference in the sound once that goes home, but I also take the verniers and I just do a measurement of the seal to the stem and it's proving to be 24 millimetres. Bang on, there you go, 24 millimetres. So I know that valve stem seal is absolutely home and hosed. Okay, so now we've got to put the spring and the spring seat back on. Grab the special tool. I'm rather chuffed with this tool. You know, you make your own tools and when it works an absolute treat every time, you just go, yes, I'm an expert. <laughs> you know what an expert is? An, an X is a has-been, a spurt's a drip under pressure. All right, here we go. Tighten this down. Now, I, I, I'm trying to, I've got to try and keep it a bit centred here. Okay, so now we put the collets back in. These slippery, slippery little suckers. But that just goes in there. And what I've been finding works is 
sorry about my hand being in the way, rotate the collet up round to the top side there and then get the bottom one back in. It just seems to have more space. So can you see how they're both sitting in there? But they're both loose at the moment. So now I'll, I'll hold them there as I bring the spring up. There you go. Look at that. Lovely. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? All right, so there you go. That is pretty much all done now on this bank. I'll go and do the other bank. I'll put the rocker gear back on, push rods in, all of that sort of stuff. Rocker cover on, and it's, uh, it's ready to go. Stem seal's changed. Well, I trust you found that absolutely fascinating. I'm, I'm buzzing that I'm actually getting this to work. It's, I've, it's just so cool. Anyway, now, once I get all of these stem seals changed, I then gonna go over and change the O2 sensors. So that'll be another video, um, a separate video, unless you're watching this in the full compilation video. But, uh, whew, it's hot, I'm having fun. We're getting the job done. All right, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and take my special tool. Well, that didn't work, did it? Spring. Ah.